Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! I don't know if you heard the Justice Secretary Elizabeth Truss on with Nick earlier talking about plans for these specialist units in some maximum security prisons for extremists who try to convert other inmates to their views. But I thought she played something close to a blinder. It was really, really impressive. Quite, quite often, obviously, we have the radio on in the office, but we're busy putting together our own programme or, or, or gossiping about our colleagues' love lives, chatting about the weekend. So, sometimes, just like you, your ear pricks up. You go, hang on, what was that? And you, you just, whoa, 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 OK. And, and that happened to me during the course of that interview. And it was really, really interesting. The government has announced plans to segregate what it calls the most dangerous Islamist prisoners from other inmates in jails in England and Wales in a bit to stop the spread of extremism. The Justice Secretary set out plans including the removal of extremist books from prison libraries and stronger vetting of prison chaplains. Our Home Affairs correspondent Daniel Sanford reports. Among the most infamous Islamist extremists now incarcerated in Britain are Anjum Chowdhury, found guilty last month of supporting so-called Islamic State. Abdullah Ahmed Ali, who led a failed Al-Qaeda plot to blow up multiple passenger jets over the Atlantic. And the 21st of July bombers, who tried to attack London two weeks after 7-7. They're just a few of the men who could spread their ideology in prison. We know it happens. Men who converted in jail include Richard Reed, the shoe bomber, and Nathan Cuffey, who unknowingly supplied the gun for a failed Islamic State attack in London. The new Justice Secretary told me it was now time to keep the worst extremists away from other inmates. There is a risk there of those highly subversive individuals being able to collaborate with each other. That's why we're talking about a number of small units rather than a single larger unit which has ha been tried in the past and where there have been significant problems. The idea is to create a set of prisons within prisons, special units inside high security jails like Belmarsh, where a few of the worst extremists can be kept completely isolated from the rest of the prison population. Jamal, not his real name, spent two years in prisons, including Belmarsh, where he saw young, violent criminals and drug dealers being quickly radicalised by a hard core of 20 extremists. There is an Islamic movement in prison, and it's not an Islamic movement based upon the beautiful virtues of Islam. No, it's an Islamic movement based upon bullying, and based upon protection, and based upon violence. But Dal Babu, previously a senior London police officer and a Muslim, warns that special units for extremists are a risky solution. Well, the danger is if you, if you put people into one unit, they become martyrs, it's a badge of honour. Uh, the danger is that these individuals then want to become the individuals that others might inspire to. So it's, it's very, very dangerous that we, we, we have these individuals there. Uh, prisons are full of vulnerable people, and we want to try and ensure that those vulnerable people do not get seduced by these individuals. Beyond the proposed special units, all prison staff will now get further counter-extremism training too. But there are no plans to set up special units in Scottish prisons, where Islamist extremism is not seen as a major problem. Daniel Sandford, BBC News. Um, however, it's not necessarily a, a slam dunk, this idea. For the very simple reason that I think the maze, the, the, the prison in Northern Ireland, during the height of the Troubles, really, where well, they had separate wings, obviously, because they thought they were prisoners of war. The uh, IRA prisoners there obviously had to be kept separate from loyalist prisoners, but there was a wing of the maze, this is where Bobby Sands undertook his, his infamous hunger strike and the like, that I think did essentially become like the HQ of the IRA. It was an alternative in-prison HQ to the IRA. The idea of sticking them all together uh, admittedly, this was in the days before you could easily communicate with the outside world. These days, all you need is a, is a carefully secreted mobile phone being smuggled into the prison. 
but it's not quite the same. I, I think that's what the Labour Party is suggesting when they say they've got fears that these special segregation units would become HQs for terror. I, I don't think it's the same for, for the very simple reason that the IRA was a, a, a complicated and, and sophisticated operation and it was known who was involved in it and which prisoners were linked to it. Um, this is altogether a little more mysterious and the Islamist terror cells or whatever they're called are not out in the open in the way that the IRA was and they are not in any sense uh, subject to similar scrutiny. So I don't know whether this would work and I don't know exactly why it's needed. I think it probably is but it's not going to be black and white. Every single person in prison who describes himself as a Muslim is not going to be part of this problem. Uh, similarly, every single person in prison who actually is genuinely a Muslim, rather than just lying about it to get a different diet or, 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 or a different bedtime, it, it's too, what's the word, varied and, and variable. So, 11.06 is the time. Let me give you a quick heads up on, on what is meant by political correctness in the context of these conversations. They say, oh, we're not doing the right thing, you will read in places. But they're, 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 officers are frightened of doing this, that or the other because of political correctness, or they're frightened of being called racist. That's absolute rollocks. Right? That's completely untrue. What they're frightened of is transgressing rules that are in place to protect religious freedom. So, first of all, it's got nothing to do with race. Um, Levi Belfield, the murderer of Millie Dowler, converted to Islam shortly after being banged up. So it's got nothing to do with race, and it's got nothing to do with political correctness. What, it, what generally happens is that right-wing newspapers use those phrases because they can't tell you the truth. The truth is that because we in this country protect religious freedom for people who don't routinely lean towards bad behaviour, so Christians, um, with regard to dietary requirements, you'd include Jews in that, not overrepresented in the prison population, either of those faiths, in the way that the Muslim faith is. But what the right wing newspapers will never tell you is that the reason why these rules are in place are because everybody with religion gets similar protection under the law. It's why the ban on those um, uh, all over swimsuits in some French towns is so fundamentally ridiculous. Because although you can be in favour of a ban upon religious garb, so you could ban dog collars, you could ban yamulkas, you could ban crucifixes, you could ban burkas or face veils, but if some Someone who's not of that religion is still allowed to wear an all-over swimsuit. You can't really ban someone who is of that religion from wearing it because you say they're wearing it for religious reasons. They say they don't want to get skin cancer. But you say, hang on, you're a Muslim. You can't wear it. Do you see what I mean? I, I know sometimes it's a bit like squeezing a pimple, these sort of issues, but the amount of nonsense that people are being fed and the amount of nonsense that perfectly decent people are swallowing whenever stories involve words like fear of racism or political correctness is terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Goodness knows if I hadn't, um, I suppose if I hadn't grown up surrounded by newspapers, I'd probably have believed some of this crud as well. But I don't. The reason why, in prison, you can convert to Islam and, and get a, quote, better deal, is the same reason why that woman who worked for British Airways um, had loads of support for the idea that she should be allowed to wear a crucifix at work, even though jewellery was banned. It's the idea of getting an exemption because of your religion. Now, I'd happily get rid of all of them, but that would involve Jewish prisoners and Jewish school children not being offered a kosher option uh, at their meals. It would involve the Sabbath not being offered up as, in some way, exempt from the regulations that everybody else in the country has to obey with regard to work or claiming benefits. It, it would, for me, be perfectly acceptable to, to, to abandon all religious exceptions in any circumstances, as long as it applied to absolutely everybody. That's the real problem with this story, is that you can't... I don't know what extra treatment you get. Can we start with that, actually? I haven't been in prison. You'll be, I hope, unsurprised to learn, uh, except as a visitor a couple of years ago. So, what, what, what special treatment do you get? Why would somebody, before we get on to the actual radicalization side of it, which is going to be a lot harder to pin down, why would somebody like Levi Belfield, a disgusting murderer, um, why would he convert inside? It's possible, of course, that he's had a vision and, and, and realized the error of his ways and embraced religion. You'll forgive me for suggesting that that's highly, highly unlikely. So what, what, is, what, is, what are the perks? There you go. So prison officer or prisoner, what are the perks? 0345 6060 973. That's just conversion, not radicalization. And that, again, a very important distinction to make. So if you can give me help on that, you don't have to tell me what you're inside for. I, I'll probably ask you, but you can tell me to get lost if you want. W what are the perks? If I went to prison tomorrow, if I was locked up tomorrow, 
why why would I contemplate converting to any religion, but looking at the numbers, Islam in particular, what what perks do I get? Okay? Now that, it seems to me, is the first question we have to ask. Not a question that many journalists bother asking. They're too busy banging on about political correctness and fear of racism. So what perks do I get? If I get locked up tonight, I wake up in the morning and I send a message to the governor saying I've converted to Islam because... And what do I get then? 0345 And then, then we can, between us, work out whether or not we think any of these perks should be allowed. Then you move on to the radicalization side of it, which is the notion that in prison, some prisoners are in a position to, um, uh, what would you say, radicalize others, brainwash others, persuade others to, to take up jihad or Islamist fundamentalism. Can you stop that by keeping them separate? I think you can. I, I, I mean, this is why I said I thought the Elizabeth Truss interview on The Breakfast Show today was so interesting, because I think you can. And I, I don't necessarily think it flies, or at least I hope it doesn't fly, in the face of any universal human rights. You, you can. Anybody who indulges in a certain mode of behaviour faces the same punishment. So if you are seeking to indoctrinate or inculcate fellow prisoners, you just get kept separately. All you lose is the right to contact with them. Is That's not an infringement of anything, is it? That's just a, an authority saying, in order to keep the prison a safe and happy place, or as safe and as happy as possible, we're going to keep you apart from them. I, if you bring in issues like solitary confinement, when people haven't actually done anything demonstrably wrong, then, then you've got a different question to answer. You've got a different backdrop. You see how this story comes alive. It becomes so much more interesting when you look at the detail rather than the headlines. So, first question, what, quotes perks do you get? by converting 0345 6060 973 and we'll use the disgusting, the depraved murderer of Millie Dowler, Levi Belfield as our sort of entry point for that question. And the second one is, what, what, what is wrong? If someone is a hate preacher, a brainwasher, a radicalizer, what's wrong with putting them in a separate part of the prison? The parallel, the warning from, from some, and including the Labour Party, is that it would become an HQ, if you like, for uh, the wrong ones in the way that IRA terrorists convicted on the mainland uh, built their own, constructed their own little cabal in prison. I don't think the parallels are the same. I really don't. So, here are the numbers now. You will get through. 0345 6060973 oh, is the number that you need. And I'm going to sound like a little bit of a snowflake now. I'm a little bit, well, I'm completely ignorant, but I'm also a little naive about prison. Um, and, and my na naivety is born of, it's, it, I suppose it's born of a sort of something a little subtler than ignorance. It's not just not knowing because I haven't been there. It, where prison officers are the ones that frighten me the most, not former prisoners. When prison officers tell me how little actual power they have, the biggest lesson I learned on this issue was to do with that old tabloid favourite about televisions and playstations. And you know how easy it is to, to convince people that prisoners are, prison is a holiday camp and it's really easy. Some prisoners will tell you as well that prison is a holiday camp. If you ever speak off the record to a prison officer, which, which I've done both here when they've assumed anonymity on air and outside the studio in, in, in private conversation, they, they will tell you that the worst thing you can ever do in a prison is take away the, the television screens. The worst thing you can ever do in a prison is, is, is ban books or deny them access to distraction because what you've really got is a lid a very, very loose lid that is there more in faith than expectation. Prisons are pressure cookers waiting to explode. As I understand it, this is why I've used the word naivety alongside the word ignorance. Um, they are pressure cookers waiting to explode and prison officers are really just trying to keep the lid on. Their funding, staffing, morale, all going through the floor. So it is not confined, if you like, to sort of Mexican hell holes and Thai jails that we all remember from Midnight Express to suggest that sometimes the prisoners, in a sense, are in charge. So the question of why you would convert, what perks you get, what, what it's about gangs quite often. And some of these gangs, as I understand it, and if I'm making a fool of myself and talking nonsense and misremembering what you've told me in the past, help me. Okay, on 0345 6060 973. It's about actually somehow having 
protection in prison. That explains a large part of the conversion or radicalization process. You turn up, you're in there for, for drugs offences or for, for knife crime or for something that has nothing to do with religious fundamentalism, and you're absolutely terrified. Someone wanders along and puts their arm around you and says, look, you, you, you come to uh, prayers with me on Friday and you meet him and, and then you chat to him and then if anyone gives you any trouble in the canteen, we'll look after you. I think that's how it works, but I don't know. That's why I keep tying myself in knots and using the twin phrase naivety and ignorance. You, if you've been in prison, if you have experience of this, you will be neither naive nor ignorant. And before we really do anything else with this conversation, we need to learn from your experience. Um, you can help us with that now. 03456060973. Why would somebody who's never really given God a second thought in his life convert to Islam when they arrive in prison. Why don't other religions offer up access to similar perks? Maybe they do. Maybe the infrastructure's not there or the system doesn't work in that way. But that's what I want to know first and foremost. I apologise for the fact that it excludes 99% of people listening to this programme from phoning in, but sometimes we just need to pin our ears back and listen to people who know about the issues that we're being encouraged to have an opinion on despite not knowing anything about them. I suppose I came pretty close to saying give me a call if you've ever been to prison, but it is with specific reference to radicalisation and religion. Uh, well, why do so many prisoners convert to Islam when they get there, and where is the journey from that to actual radicalization? Uh, you, you need to recognize that all of the rules are in place to protect all religions, but that of course leaves them open to abuse, and I suspect that they are being pretty roundly and routinely abused. Paul's in Islington. Paul, what can you tell us? Yeah, I'm, I'm most, the most when I've been in prison, the most people that are the class who mix with the Muslims are the weaker sort of people, like the likes of Levi, Levi Belfield, for instance. Mm. The only reason he's got involved with Muslims is for protection. From whom? He's from other inmates. Muslims, in the prison system, the Muslims will accept anybody into what we will call their gang. Because that's what they are in prison, they're a gang. Yes. So they'll take all the weak, vulnerable people and protect them. And that is the only reason majority of people, and we talk, let's talk about white English. They're the people that, that will run to the Muslims for protection, and they protect them. So it's a form of it's safety. That's all it is for them. They don't, they don't mean nothing to them, their religion. It's just they're cowards and they, they don't want to face other people, so they go to them for help. And what's in it for the gang? What, what, what's in it for them? Just numbers? Numbers. Numbers. And the numbers scare the screws. So until you can somehow break up these gangs, which I presume would involve uh, investment and manpower on a scale that the Home Office is never even going to contemplate, you've just got tribes, really, and, and, and Levi Belfield would not be welcome into any other tribe in prison, so he joins this one. Not at all. Is that right? That one. That's the truth of it. What gang were you in? How would you how would you describe your grouping if you had one? I was just in a gang of friends, just friends. People that you knew before you went inside, or I mean, what did you have in common? What was your kind of? Well, you just you just know people from when you're big on the outside, and you meet up when you're in prison. You bump into a few friends, and this you might be three or four of you. But the Muslims, there's it's a proper proper organised gang. So it's not, I mean, the way, the way you describe it, the, the, it, it might as well be the Bloods and the Crips. The fact that Islam is a, is a religion is completely incidental to what you're describing. It's just the it's, name for that gang. Different. It's the name for the gang. But in, if you look in America, like you've got the Muslim Brotherhood and, and people like that in the prisons. Yes. In England, you haven't got the likes of uh, the Aryan Brotherhood. You haven't got them sort of gangs. They're, they're biker gangs usually in America, aren't they? Yeah, but in the prisons, you've got the, the, the Muslims people converge to the Muslims. They target the Muslims because they are protection. And in England, because there's no other real gang... If you're in there, if you're either a sex offender, yeah. you're a grass, you're, you're an out-and-out, -out, what we class as a scourge of society, they will take you under their wing. They will take you under their wing. And because they're protecting themselves as well by doing that. So, I, I mean, I don't know how it began, but you have to presume that it, it began with people perhaps being the victim of violence, and then they sort of band together, and then the more people you can persuade to join your gang, 
the less likely any of the people in it, whether they are the scourge of society or or or, or, or not, the less likely they are to get a battering. Well, right? let's say the scourge of society. Let's say the scum of the prison system. The scum of the prison That's system. What I mean. Yes. That's what I mean. And and That's so you, I mean. you you'll have prisoners who describe themselves as Muslim who are not the scum of the prison system, but they'll be in the same gang, and the bigger the gang, the safer everybody is. In, in that little world, yeah. They won't target people, say, for instance, this, this say, for instance, an, an armed robber. They wouldn't target an armed robber, because an armed robber would say, look, mate, not for me, leave me alone. I'm a Christian, I don't want to be involved. I'm a Christian armed robber. <laughs> Yeah. It's a big crossover, yeah. that is it? <laughs> I can't. Oh, no, I can't. I can't come on that job, Big Vern. I've got to go to church. I've got to go to church, yeah. Big Vern. I can't do that job on Sunday. I don't want to be. I don't want to be a Muslim. Well, they have their usually have their, their days on a Friday in the prison system. Yeah. And what else do they get? What else? I mean, in terms of the perks, is there, is there, I mean, people talk to me, I've heard in the past about food and freedom and getting out of your cell, anything? And things like that, and they don't have to eat pork and, and they, silly things. But the main thing is not about the perks or the food, it's protection. It is purely protection in numbers. Yes, the, the only thing I'm not going to let you get away with is, is describe, sure. well, you, you, you were in a small group of friends, or a group of friends, that's also a gang, so what you had in common was the sort of crimes that you'd committed, or the sort of... No, uh, no, we was just friends, but you've got, you've got to talk to someone in prison. <laughs> but so, so do the scum. Yeah, but the scum, you, we wouldn't take the scum under our wing. <laughs> Which is why and they end up, so, so if we want to stop, so if we want to stop uh, vulnerable prisoners or scummy prisoners from converting to Islam, we need to persuade prisoners like you to let them join your gang. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. They couldn't possibly come into our gang. Well, then they're always going to do this then. So what the Home Secretary needs to take on board is that this is not a response to, to, to the environment in prison. It's a response to the fact that good, honest criminals like, good, honest Christian criminals like you won't let the nonces and the ne'er-do-wells into your gang. Million percent right. <laughs> so if they want to take them, they can take them. But the only way you're going to stop this is really separate. I, I, I don't know how you can resolve. No, no, I don't really. I, I, you, you pull what you just did. Then that was hilarious because I thought, what's he going to say now? The only way you can stop this, I'm, I'm blown if I know what he's got up his sleeve. And then you realise you still you didn't have anything up your sleeve. Nothing, because it's it's, it's, it's it's that's the fact. Unless you have segregated prisons, but then. You'd ask to go to the Muslim prison. You'd be, well, okay. Let's let's call a spade a spade. The reason why these people, whether they are sex offenders or, 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 or I mean, in the case of Levi Belfield, he's he's ticked almost every box of disgusting. Yeah. The, the reason why they are converting to Islam is because they're frightened of people like you. They're frightened of the system. No, they're, they're frightened. They're frightened of. They're frightened of what people like you are going to do to them if you get them alone in in a dark corridor. Which they deserve. Well, that's a conversation for a different day, but my goodness me, you've put a new perspective on things. Why would that scumbag over there want to convert to Islam? Because he's frightened of what that prisoner over there will do to him if, if he doesn't have the support of a big grouping or gang. Because he's a coward, and he'd run to them. He won't fight men, he'll kill little girls and women, but he'll run to the Muslims for help. Yeah, I get yeah, it. Man, I stand up and fight normal people, not women and kids. No, obviously no one's going to argue with you when you say that. And, and, and yet, what you've done is give an understanding of why this happens that perhaps is somewhat lacking from most of the coverage today. They're not doing it because it improves the quality of their upholstery in their cell. They're doing it because if they don't, and this is in no way sort of criticising yeah. you, if they don't, they're going to get their head stoved in by people like you. More or less. Yeah. More or less. I'm going to give... I, do, I, I think... I, I know this is a very serious subject, Paul, and I know that uh, we shouldn't make light of it, but I think the quality of your contribution to this conversation deserves a Ray Liotta moment, don't you? I don't know what that means. Well, you do now. I'm Ray Liotta, and you're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. If you build it, they will come. Which is a sort of roundabout, Hollywood-inspired way of saying it. was in Goodfellas as well, wasn't he, Ray Liotta? So it kind of has a certain... Uh, a lot of prison, Goodfellas unfolded in prison, which is why we don't book uh, on this programme the people who've written books about it. We book the people who are slightly surprised to find themselves explaining it to several hundred thousand people on the radio. So there you have it. It doesn't necessarily change the wisdom or otherwise of the latest proposals, but my God, it changes my understanding of the issue. This scumbag is going to get his head kicked in. So, in order to prevent that from happening, he's going to join a gang that can protect him. Any gang will do, but the only one that actually is prepared to take him is the one that is, quotes, Muslim, end quotes.
03456060973 is the number that you need. It's 28 minutes after 11. Um, Abbas is in Redbridge. Abbas, what can you tell us? You've got about a minute. Oh, well, I don't know if I can cram it all in. All right, bad luck, mate. That's fine. It's all right. We'll find someone else. It's coming up to 11.29. You are listening to James O'Brien on LBC. After the the news, I'll talk to Rob, and then I'll talk to Greg, and then I'll talk to Lisa, and then hopefully I'll talk to you. But Abbas, we won't be talking to you because he can't squeeze himself into the time available. You can tweet at Mr. James O'B, you can text 84850, or you can email james at lbc.co.uk. The other story we're going to talk about after 12 o'clock today, I'll give you a heads up now. It's on the front of the Times today. Today. The number of middle-class teenage girls suffering from anxiety or depression has surged in the past decade. Now, there are two ways to approach this, um, very simply. There are two ways to approach this story. Either you can kind of do that slightly um, undignified and, and ignorant thing where you go, do you believe it? Do you really think these people are suffering from distress? Which is a bit like asking someone on crutches whether they've really broken their leg. Or you can try and unpick it. And the easy unpicking is social media. That's the big accusation today. Too much social media is making anxiety and depression reach epidemic proportions among teenagers, especially female teenagers and especially middle class teenagers. i got a different theory. I think you're more anxious than your parents were. I, I think actually we all spend more time with that knot in our tummy that didn't seem to exist as much in previous generations. And there will be some simplistic arguments and there will be some complicated arguments as to why that will be but i i think that what is happening to teenage girls in this context is actually happening to all of us and i think i know why i'll tell you after 12. special isolation units in british prisons to stop so-called hate preachers from spreading their bile i've got absolutely no problem with that whatsoever um and I, I, I can't see that it would involve any infringement of people's human rights or indeed lead to anybody being called racist it it, it is fairly straightforward if you try to the problem is i mean it's straightforward until you ask someone to define exactly what involves radicalization i I think we've got an astonishing number of radicalized people in this country I, i wonder if they're even in the majority now because by radicalized what i mean is people who will never ever ever change their view however much evidence they're given that they're wrong so we, we've got people who are radicalised with regard to climate change. We've got people who literally close their eyes and put their fingers in their ears and insist that they're right when all of the evidence or, or, or science or data proves that they're not radicalised. Uh, whenever we have a conversation about the Middle East, the first people who cannot even contemplate the possibility that their, quotes side, end quotes, could ever do anything wrong will be supporters of, of the Likud party. In Israel, the idea, I've said it to people, do, can your side ever do anything? I mean, what is the definition of radicalization? <laughs> it is, I guess, turning somebody into someone who just doesn't, it becomes like a belief system rather than an intellectual process. We cannot ever be wrong. So what does radicalization in prison look like? How many of these people, as Paul told us, and you might not have liked what Paul said, but he spent a lot of time in prison. He knows a hell of a lot more about this issue than I do. It's not a religious thing. It is It is the people who are going to get their heads kicked in by other prisoners, often, who, quotes, convert, end quotes, for safety. They're joining a gang. That they Those people are not going to end up being terrorists. Paul, another Paul, accuses me of avoiding the issue. I'm not, mate. I'm just working with what I've got. Those who join for gang protection only do not go on to become terrorists. The idea um, is to be solved in these c- converting into supporting terrorism. Yeah, you're right, but I don't know where the line is. How do you tell the difference between someone who is a potential terrorist and somebody who's just joined this gang because there's safety in numbers? We'll find out, I hope. 0345 The more I think about it, the more I wonder whether there's even a debate to be had about the actual... Um, Uh, isolation units. I'd be astonished if anybody's opposed to those. Look, here's a proper hate preacher. The only thing you can argue about is the criteria for deciding what a hate preacher is. Once you've decided, once you've established, once you've identified, Anjem Chowdhury, should he be kept separate from other prisoners? Yeah, of course he should. Don's in Vauxhall. Don, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Hi. Uh, First time caller. Uh, You're very welcome. uh, I enjoy enjoy your show, man. Uh, Thanks, mate. You're the best presenter, you know, in in this country, basically. Thanks, Don. Well, Well, who's better than me in America? (laughs) (laughs) stop it put the ego away what would you like to say (laughs) Uh, well basically uh, I grew up in a Christian Christian uh, household Uh, eventually I got this this, you know big disillusion with uh, Christianity so I became a Jew right Jewish uh, and after uh, and I also became disillusioned with that as well Uh, I got a bit of trouble I went to prison Uh, I got five years for uh, fraud and for uh, money laundering 
Um, been in prison for the first first five days, you know. Obviously, you know, it gets to know a few things or something. Yeah. And I realised that I had to, you know, convert to Islam straight away because uh, protection, basically. Talk, talk, talk me through how that happened. I mean, what 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 made you realise that, and 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 how do you go about doing it? Protection from whom, for a start? Well, basically the numbers. I mean, if you wasn't a Muslim, you know, you basically felt isolated. You know, I mean, there was, there's more Muslims in the prison than, than anybody else, any other, any other, you know, kind of, uh, what do you say, gang or or religious uh, background. Uh, but the perks, you know, the food was better. You know, you had a bit of time Friday, you got a gym You know, so we had a bit of... So your decision, your decision was based entirely on, on personal convenience. It wasn't like a yeah. crisis of faith or a, or a religious... No, not, not at all. Not so you weren't, you weren't converted or radicalised then, you just wanted to get out of your cell on Fridays and have better food and not get not get your head kicked in. Exactly, oh. exactly. I mean, I mean, basically what was that, you know, I said I sussed out the, the prison, it was my first time in prison, you know, within five days, and I realised that you have to convert, either you convert or, you, or you've been in trouble, you know? So, so ah, I, uh, well, talk me, talk me through that trouble. What if you say, no, I don't want to convert? What, what then happens to you? Well, if you got attacked or you got in trouble, nobody will help you. you attacked by whom? Who would you be attacked by? Well, well by other prisoners. Other prisoners, or, or if, if the why can't you join their gang? There was no other gangs. There were just a few friends. People just you know wanted you know just just a uh, limited amount of people that like, like had a gangs. Just so like the more gang, basically the, the more the gang was, was the Muslims. The more ignorant you are of of prison, this is why Paul was an interesting first caller because I'm putting you two in contrast to each other. Uh, you describe exactly the same scenario, but because he knew people, he felt safe under their wing, you turned up not knowing anyone, and the only people who offered you protection from prison life were the Muslims, the, the Muslim gang. Yeah, I mean, basically, I mean, it's, it's, it's straightforward. I mean, if, if you first time you go in there, you suss at the place, you look at what's got happening, and you just realise that the Muslims run, run the prisons. So if you got attacked or somebody, you know, uh, you know, uh, wouldn't do any harm, you, you by yourself. You couldn't nobody help you. It's but funny, it was, isn't it? It's, it's, it's just getting even more complicated because at the moment, I, I, you, you'd have to wonder why anybody wouldn't join them yeah, yeah, un unless exactly. you were part of a, a well-established criminal fraternity and you had your own friends on the inside already. That's right, James. If 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 you're a Muslim and you and you you get touched, you, you basically you've been touched by the whole. By whole uh, you get backing all the Muslims. Everybody will back you. So you can't. So all the, if you're Muslims, nobody will mess with you. And do you do any actual religion? Do you do any sort of scriptural study? Yeah. Do you have conversations yeah, yeah. about? So how does that work? What does that look like? Well, basically, I, I, I convert. I, I, do, I talk about my Juma, which is you now conversion of Muslim. Say, you know, you, you, you believe the Prophet Muhammad is, is you know, is, yes. uh, is messenger of Yeah. So I, I took that on on, on uh, at the prayers, and I became Muslim just because of that. So that that made me feel I feel more safer, even more powerful. Because nobody can talk, talk to me. Yeah, but that's got nothing you know, to do with religion. That's got everything to do with gangs. And so you've been yeah, a Christian well, and a Jew and a Muslim. How do you describe... You're certainly hedging your bets, <laughs> aren't you, Don? I tell you, you get to the pearly gates, you're going to have to decide which ID card to pull out. What, um, what, what, how, how do you I'm describe quest, yourself I'm now? Quest, I'm on a quest now, James. I'm on a quest. I've got on a journey. We're all on we're a journey, looking. my friend, but where, where are you yeah. heading? <laughs> Well, <laughs> I'm looking for the next big thing. The next big thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, how? I mean, did you did you cease to be in any way Muslim the minute you walked out of prison? Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't go to any, you know, uh, God, Friday meetings or, 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 or yeah. As soon as I, I left, I, 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 didn't, I didn't see no, no, no need to be because you weren't worried you know, about going getting a slap exactly. every time you. But, but, but <laughs> exactly, but in prison, if, if you're Muslim. Nobody touches even the, even the screw even the, their officers. They all mess with you if you're Muslim because they know the whole Muslim uh, population will be on top of them. It's too they big. Touch you, so. And so if yeah. they arrange, if they arrange, uh, uh, you know, I forget what the phrase is, not a riot, but but low level agitation. There's so many people that would join in. That's what you mean when you say that that, that, that they run the prison. I buy it completely. It's fascinating to reflect on the idea that you cease to be anything to do with it when you leave the prison. But while you're in prison, uh, the way it stands to this sort of naive middle class snowflake, I'd be signing up 
immediately if it was the only way I could protect myself from Big Vern in the showers. A few of you complaining about my employment of Big Vern in the context of these conversations. He is, of course, a famous star of a cartoon strip in Viz magazine, and you're quite right. He never would have ended up in prison because he always blows his own head off shortly before being caught. 11.41 is the time. Don, thank you, and thank you for the kind words. Well, what do you make of it so far, then? Seriously, I told you it wasn't black and white. Are, are you a Muslim? Yes, I am a Muslim. Why are you a Muslim? Well, I don't want to get my head kicked in. Will you be a Muslim when you leave prison? No. How on earth are they going to identify the radicalizers if the main reason why people are converting is either for the food, the freedom, or the protection? Lisa is at London Bridge. Lisa, what can you tell us? Hi. Um, Hi, Lisa. Yeah, my father's been in prison from the age of 15, and I see him quite regularly. And um, How old is he now? He's 30. Okay. Um, you don't have to, you know, people, vulnerable people going to prison um, for the simple fact that they think they're going to get a better life, better food, they get out more often, they feel like they're going to be protected because if anyone says anything to them, yes. then they've got the whole of the Muslim gang, you know, protecting them. But then after a couple of weeks of having to do all the praying and praying four times a day and fasting, <laughs> they want to convert back to being normal again. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's so, so, that's so easy to believe, isn't it? Yeah, I'll join. Yeah, I'll join. Oh, what? Another more prayers? More bar? Forget about it. I'm going to take my chances in the canteen. <laughs> and my brother, um, yeah, my brother's worked on the canteen a hot plate, passed over a bit of bacon that didn't touch a Muslim's plate, and the Muslim started going off his nuts saying that he couldn't, he wanted a whole new breakfast because a bit of bacon was past his plate. <sighs> you know, it's, it's just, and you don't have to convert in prison, you've just got to stand your ground and stick with your own. Well, that, that is easier said than done, isn't it? Some people find it hard to stand their ground, and some people will struggle to know who their own are. No, to be fair, like you said, if you're going to go into prison, you're vulnerable and you're scared, and you've got all these people telling you they're going to protect you, you're going to have a better life in prison, yeah. you're going to get out more, this is going to happen, you'll get better food, you get better diet, we do this, we do, do that. Do they get better no, food? Is that is that a myth, or is that actually yeah, true? That is, yeah, no, no, that is true, they do get better food. They get a better diet. They well, get why? Better well, what food, how is the food better? Why can't everyone eat the same food? Because they don't eat certain foods, like they won't eat pork or... They won't eat... Uh, why, do, why doesn't... Why, but, but you know what would happen, you see. This is... I'm not being um, uh, mischievous here, but if they announced that everybody's going to have to eat the same diet in prison as the Muslims do, they'd kick off for the opposite reason. The newspapers would be kicking off about non-Muslim prisoners being forced to eat... Riot. Yeah, but hang on a minute. Why would, there, why would there be a riot if the Muslims are getting better food? Look, the Muslims would go, if, if, if the Muslim, if the prison said, right, all Muslims, all inmates that come into this prison are all getting the same diet, all getting the same food, you're all on the same whatever, yeah. the Muslims would go completely off their no, head. No, 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 because everyone's have... getting what they get. Yeah, but they won't like it, the Muslims. They, they won't have that. What? They won't have, the Muslims won't have that. Can't stop, well, you can't, you know, you've got it the wrong way round, surely. The Muslims are going to object if people eat the same food as them. Surely the objections are going to be, I don't... Well, look, if I open up the phone now... No, Lisa, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I, I think maybe I haven't explained myself very well. You, you've heard you've heard radio phone-ins about halal. Everyone's head starts spinning around and their eyes go back and, I don't want to eat halal food, I don't want to eat halal food. That's where the... I don't mind eating halal. What? I don't mind eating a bit of halal meat. I, I, know, I know you don't, but, but usually the way these controversies are, are, are portrayed is that people don't want to eat halal and they hate the that they've had their choice taken away. I, I think if I was a prison governor, I'd stick everyone yeah. on the same halal diet. Well, I'm saying, if they said one day, right, everybody in the whole prison, we're all having chicken curry tonight yeah. for dinner, and the Muslims say, well, we can't eat that. Why not? It's not part of our... Because that's, that, that, it's not part of their religion. They're not allowed. They're not allowed chicken curry? Well, there's... They're not allowed to eat pork, so they're not allowed to eat bacon. There's no pork they're and bacon allowed... in a chicken curry. No, I know, but I'm just saying, for, for instance, if it, they did say... No, I, again, I think to... you've got me You've got me backwards. I'm not saying the Muslims should be forced to eat bacon. I'm saying if it really no, is the case... You're not saying, you're not, you're not listening to what I'm saying. If, if, oh, if, 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 if an English man went into prison... Yeah, they're all English. And said, yeah, yeah, an English uh, man went into prison and said, well, I'm not going to eat this, I'm not going to eat that. If he told you, well, you don't eat, well, stop then. No, not, 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 not if it was religious. I mean, Christianity doesn't really have any food regulations anymore, but Judaism does. No, 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 no 
no Jewish prisoner would be forced to eat non-kosher food if that was an important part of their um, belief system. It would be Im almost impossible to accommodate some of the orthodox uh, food and drink regulations. But I, 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 I mean, listen, I'm, I'm not having a row with you. I think we've, either one of us has got the wrong end of the stick. If you, not, I've never met a Muslim, however uh, sort of extreme they may be in their views, who objects to anybody else eating halal food. It's always the other way around. It's always people who, who aren't Muslims who don't want to eat halal food. It reminds me, there's that UKIP line in the run-up to the election when they had it on their manifesto that get rid of all ritually, ritually slaughtered food and their agricultural spokesman got caught saying to a Jewish voter, oh, we didn't really want you to be involved in this. You're collateral damage. Is it, look, this is a way of, of, of upsetting Muslims. We didn't really think it through. We didn't realise it was going to upset Jews as well. The idea that there'd be trouble in prison if they just said, all right, everyone's on the same diet. Everyone's on the Muslim diet. Ah, come on. Imagine the front page of the Sun and the Mail. British prisoners, decent British prisoners forced to eat halal. That's what I'm seeing. Come on. You know that's what would happen. It's 11.47. Why are we all so anxious? Uh, we'll talk specifically about teenage girls. They're in the news today. Depression epidemic sweeping through their ranks. But I, I don't think it's confined to teenage girls. I think we're all more anxious than previous generations, when in many ways our lives are easier. I, I want to try to work out why. I've got a theory of my own I'll share with you after 12. Um, I'm sure the suspense won't kill you. Until then, we continue our conversation. It ticks, I mean, almost all the boxes of, of lazy controversy in this country. But can you use the phrase political correctness, James? Yeah, you can use the phrase political correctness. Can you use the phrase racism, James? Yeah, you can use the phrase racism. So you got a Muslim angle, James? A Muslim angle? It's all about the Muslims. Oh, wow, it's fantastic. It's like a Daily Mail wet dream. Anjem Chowdhury, can we stick him in it? Yeah, it's basically about Anjem Chowdhury. Um, uh, pri pri criminals, prisons, yeah, it's all there. Everything's there. Every, everything, almost every bet noir of the British media is there. And yet the truth is a million miles away from what I've been reading all morning. How do I know that? Well, I've been speaking to people who've been to prison. Um, and the reason why so many people who don't go in as, quote, Muslims, end quotes, convert, is because they're frightened of what will happen to them if they haven't got the protection of a large group. And then you've got this question, why would you do it? You get better food. What do you mean better food? Why they don't have to eat pork? I said, why is no pork the equivalent to better food? I'd much rather eat bacon than not eat bacon. If you stick everyone on a halal diet, there'd be a riot, because you're taking away my bacon. You can't win, unless you ban religion from all public institutions. The problem if you do that, that's every faith school in the country gone out the window. How many times do we start a conversation about apparently exclusively Islamic problems and end up realizing that the problem is religion in general and, and fundamentalism in general rather than specific? But in prison right now, it seems to me, having spoken to Big Paul, I'm going to call him Big Paul, I hope he doesn't mind. He sounded like a Big Paul, didn't he? At the top of the hour, he sounded very much like a Big Paul. Having spoken to Big Paul, I almost think if you haven't got a history of criminality, you turn up in prison not knowing which way to turn, you'd be daft not to sign up to the biggest gang in town. Sam's in Redbury. Sam, what made you pick up the phone? Hello, hello, mate. Uh, hello, James. I just wanted to give a call regarding your current conversation, and I actually know of somebody uh, who is a Muslim and who entered into the prison system and grew a beard and, uh, you know, came out and, uh, you know, was good for a while, but then unfortunately went back into mischief. And if I'm not mistaken, he's back inside now or could end up there quite soon. Um, so I can see your point of view, but thank you, Jane, to be quite honest with you, my friend. Um, you mentioned two options about whether a Muslim is either being converted to Islam for protection or secondly, for radicalization. Now, what you need to do, James, is you need to insert a third choice there Go too, on. my friend, which is either is he also converting to be a real Muslim, a real peaceful Muslim, you know, which is the representative of about almost 2 billion people in this entire world, arguably. Yeah, there's about, you know, 1.7 billion Muslims in the I, world. I, I'm not going to lie to you, Sam. I, 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 I think, I, I think you're right. Sam, Muslims, I hear you, yeah? mate, I hear you. And, and, and you're absolutely right. And I'm not, I'm not in any way closing you down on this. I, I don't believe among the people who convert to Islam in prison, I think the category you describe is probably negligible. And I'm happy to be proven wrong. But it seems to me that you're either doing it in order to make your life a little bit easier, and then you become susceptible possibly to the kind of brainwashing or, or hate preaching that, that the Home Secretary is concerned about, or, or you're not. I, I don't know that there is a significant swathe of people turning up in prison without any religion whatsoever and discovering the beauty of what you would describe as true Islam. 
you know, you know what I'll say to you, James, yeah, is you know what you need to realize, my friend, yeah? you need to look at factual information, yeah? Yeah, I am. That's what I'm yeah? saying. That's what I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm wondering and, and, and where to find those okay, numbers. Let me, let, me, let me blast you. Let me blast you, yeah? You know, since 9 11, yeah? Since yeah. 9 11, yeah? Since 9 11, since Islam has been echo, propagated, right? yeah? yeah? As the worst religion and the worst type of thing a human being could do, Islam has been the fastest growing religion since 9 11. So, and I, in this country. I don't think you're listening to me, Sam, my friend. My friend, my friend. Yes, I'm talking about yes. people in prison. I'm not talking about yes, the world at people. large. And, and I wonder what right. statistics you've got about, and how do you tell the difference between somebody who is, if you like, a convert, an opportunistic convert, someone who's doing it to protect yeah. themselves, and someone who yeah. isn't? Can you tell me how I can spot the difference, Mr. Facts? Uh, you mentioned another point there. No, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. You're, you're, you're on the spot now, my friend. You, you've yeah, just, so, so here is, here are two people, they both say they've converted yeah. to Islam, one has discovered the peace and beauty of what you would call true Islam, one of them's just done it so he doesn't get stabbed in the showers. How can I tell the difference? You can't, I, I, I can't What? Don't have an what? Mr. You. Statistics? Mr. Statistics hasn't got an answer to that yeah. question when he's giving everybody else a lesson in how things work. I'm afraid you're going to have to do better than that. How do I tell the difference? Between a person who Between the people is, I'm uh, talking about and the people you're talking about, because I don't think the people you're talking about exist. Right. Well, if the people I'm talking about don't exist, who 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 are you thinking I'm talking about right now? I've I've told you that when you mentioned earlier on about how you can either spot a person on radicalization, a person on radicalization, yeah, is somebody who would want to kill innocent people. You can spot them. I know, I know, I know who they are. We're not talking about them. Yeah. We're talking about the third yeah, exactly. category that you introduced. Here's an opportunistic convert, and yeah. here's the real yeah. deal. How do I tell the difference? Yeah. To be honest with you, I, I, I don't. I'm not going to try and answer you uh, on this question. No, 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 no. Let me rephrase that on your behalf. Question, yeah. I have absolutely yeah. no idea, James, and I apologise for coming on the radio accusing you of not understanding the issue that I hadn't thought through properly. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I don't. I, have I agree answer, with you too, and the apology is accepted. Dee Dee's in Shepherd's Bush. Dee Dee, what would you like to say? Hello, how are you doing, James? I'm, I'm all like, good. Um, I'd like to give a little bit of balance to the topic at the moment. Bring and um, I'd like to answer your last question in how do you spot them? Um, basically, James, it's about actions, looking at their actions. I, was, I went prison. I converted to Islam in prison. At the time, I was going to um, church. And um, I was looking for something bigger than myself to believe in because I was looking at double figures. And I went along to the church and I saw things going on in the church, do you know what I mean? Drugs getting passed around, people not taking it seriously. I was going to Bible classes and asking questions upon questions because if I was going to believe in something, I wasn't just going to follow rhetoric. Yes. Do you understand? I do, At yes. the Bible class, they told me, like, you need to stop asking so many questions, yeah? Oh, really? I went back to myself, <laughs> yeah, they told me that, if you don't... If you don't start, stop asking so many questions, we're going to have to stop you from coming back. Do you know, mate, I got that from the monks at my boarding school. I got exactly the same. <laughs> right. you, so, you, so you get it? Do I do get it. it? I do. For me, it's like if you want me to believe in something, you need to give me answers, X, Y, and Z. So I've gone back to my cellmate, and my, my cellmate was, was um, Muslim. Yes. And he said to me, come to Islamic classes. And so I went to Islamic classes, and the first thing I learned while I was there was that it's, it's a faith where you're meant to ask questions. You're meant to ask questions and look for questions and study and you have your own interpretation and at the end of the day, you will be judged for your wrongdoings, right and wrong. So everything that I had to do, I had to decide for myself whether I was going to do right and wrong. And so in answer to your question, how do you spot the difference? Just watch what they're doing in there every day. Like when they're going amongst the wing, when they're going amongst like everyone and how they're dealing with people, you're looking at how they, are they still f praying five times a day? Although they're, they're saying they're Muslims in jail, are you praying five times a day? In between your prayers, what are you doing? Do you know what I'm saying? Are you mistreating people? Like, I'm not saying you've got to be like, you're going to be a, the greatest guy while you're, on, while you're on your dean in jail. Do you know what I mean? Because there's going to be people that come and test you. But, but you're trying you're trying to live the message rather than rather than just sort of assume it as camouflage while you're yeah. inside in order to protect yourself. Yeah. But th here's the thing, yeah. Didi. Here's my problem now. Listening to you, doesn't that make you more susceptible to the radicalisation and the if the religious interest is no. genuine rather no, than opportunistic? No, no, because this is the thing. This is the thing, right? Like I said, the, one of the first things I learned was that you must question stuff. Yeah, you must question stuff. So. 
if someone comes to radicalize you, you must question what he's saying. You must question the hadith and the source that he's passing on to you and see whether there is a proper source. Yeah, you must question what you're being told. Yeah, and you must go and study it. That's a part of being a true and, and, and if, Muslim. Uh, to be, so, we're going to run out. We're, we're, well, no, we're going to run out of time. That's the only reason that I'm talking over you. I understand everything you've told me, and, I, and, I, and I've learned a lot from you. And you've kept your faith, have you? After coming yeah, out of prison, I have. I have, and I've gone back into prison and done workshops and self development with more than just Muslim people. But let me just say this, James. We're going to run out. In Islam, right. we have things that are called hypocrites. Yeah, and you <laughs> we, must. We got them over here as well. Right, so you, we must be aware of those inside our, our faith that are hypocrites as well. So, you, know, you, get, you get what I'm trying I do, to say. I do get what you're saying. People who are sort of bearing false pride, uh, well, well, I can't remember what we call it, bearing false witness, and people who are using the religion, if you like, to advance their own causes. There'll be plenty of them in prison, and I guess it's people like you, Didi, if I, if I, I mean, I take everything you say at face value, and I've got no reason not to, you're probably the best people to blow the whistle on those characters. 12 noon.